this session is called the proof why transparency is the answer. Um, I'd love to start with a couple of questions in regards to why some of you might think or might not think that transparency is a good idea or an answer. Any, any, anybody for or against that would share something? I will call on people because I need people to participate. Yes, sir. Awesome. Uh, not awesome that that happened, obviously, but awesome that, that I, I appreciate that. So, so I, I, I asked this because the reality of this conversation is I have this statement as a statement, not as a question. So I'm going to tell you today, not that I'm asking you a question, but that I want you to leave here today as a believer that this is the only way to be able to go forward. So this starts with my personal story. Now, I'm going to preface this that the reality of this, I uh, was building this presentation on the way here. For most of you that know, I live in Puerto Rico. Uh, so Puerto Rico and San Diego, in case you guys don't know, nowhere near each other. And the reality of this is I was finishing this presentation and I cried on uh, the plane. So if I cry on this, I'm going to tell you I apologize, but it, it'll be worth the story. So um, I was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and my parents moved us to the States when I was three years old. My parents were chasing the American dream. Yes, I understand that Puerto Rico is part of the United States, but you still chase the American dream when you're leaving. So growing up, I, was, I grew up a very, very normal, normal person. Tree houses, hide and go seek, baseball, loved girls, loved baseball. That is me and my dad. Uh, if Eric Silverman was in here, I would throw an Orioles joke out there, but the reality of it is I loved baseball. And my life was normal. I had two very hardworking parents. So I love being an immigrant. I don't know if you can immigrate from Puerto Rico since it's part of the United States, but I always identify as an, a, an immigrant because the reality of it is I learned so much from my parents about hustle and hard work. So my life was pretty normal until an infamous day, the day after Christmas when I was 15 years old. My dad was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. Now, multiple myeloma, for those of you that don't know, is cancer of your bone marrow. And my dad had a bone marrow transplant, chemo, radiation, and hundreds of thousands of dollars of medical expenses. Now, the interesting part about this is that he spent three years at the Moffitt Cancer Center, a renowned cancer institution, just luckily because we lived in the 33659 area code. We got lucky that in that area code, we actually had a renowned cancer institution. Now, the interesting part about this, I remember growing up that I was so thankful that my parents had health insurance. My mom worked for the VA government, or for, the, for the federal government at the VA for 41 years. So we had the bomb health insurance. But the bomb health insurance still has what? Three, four, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar out of pocket cost. And so there's one drug. Anybody ever heard of Revlimed? Revlimed, what is it for? Stump the, stump the pharmacist. So it is a uh, cancer treatment drug that after you have a bone marrow transplant, you will be on Revlimed for the rest of your life. Revlimed is $150,000. Now, $150,000. Today, if you went on the Revlimed website, you would see this right here. This is a patient assistance program. A patient assistance program that somebody could get this drug if they qualified for the patient assistance threshold of a family of four for Revlimed is $155,000. My parents combined made $92,000. Now. When I was 17 years old, my parents had to file bankruptcy. Now why? 
I always think about this, and I'm a little embarrassed to say this at times, because mostly when you think about filing bankruptcy, you think about people that spent their money frivolously, right? Gucci, vacations, nice cars. My parents lived in the same house we bought in 1984 when we moved to Tampa. My mom never bought anything, and all of our vacations were around my baseball tournaments. So being a 17-year-old boy filing bankruptcy, I'll tell you, it's not the coolest way to get girls. I promise you that. And, but what it taught me is, and what I know now, does anybody know what this number is? The percentage of bankruptcies caused by medical insurance. Over half of these people, my parents included, actually had medical insurance. So the reality of all of this is for me, as a 17-year-old boy in Tampa, Florida, trying to figure this out, my American dream was broken. How do you recover from filing bankruptcy? Now, I got lucky that I went to a college, go Knowles, that had a risk management insurance. Anybody got there? I wish Kareem was in here because the reality of it is, hey, and you back row Baptist, you have to come up here because I don't allow people in the back row. So come on. Yeah, you, you that turned around, you are way in the back, come on. Um, so the reality of this conversation is that when I got to college, I remember I was going to school on $250 that my parents were giving me for my dad's disability policy. I go to a class called Intro to Risk Management and the light hit. I obviously have a story to tell. I am a product of employee benefits. Now, I don't love employee benefits because I am now attributing the fact that insurance really sucks. And we do this for a living. Anybody really love the actual thing that we do at times? It's why we're all in here. Because we don't like what the regular form of insurance is called, but the reality of it is we are all in the insurance profession. I've had the most amazing career. I won Rookie of the Year at Sun Life in 2002. Yes, I'm getting old. I thought I was the young one in the room, and now what I'm saying, I'm in my 20th year in this business. Uh, I worked at Willis. I grew my own almost $4 million book. I was a chief growth officer for North America. I had 200 people that worked for me. We did $42 million a year in new business. I don't brag for this. I brag for the fact that I have been in this business, but for most of my career, I was making a shish kebab. I don't know if they're going to get mad if I said it. Uh, a shish kebab uh, amount of money doing it the wrong way. Until any, uh, any Puerto Ricans, any Latinos in here? So most Latin guys, if you miss it, girls, if you're single girls, most Latin guys you will date are huge mama's boy and I am no different. In April of 2004, my mom called me and told me the worst news I've ever heard. Pancreatic cancer. Has anybody ever Googled pancreatic cancer? Here's what you find. 4.6 months. I can tell you the day I heard, I can tell you what I was wearing, I can tell you that Google search, and I can tell you the hole I punched through the wall. But the reality of it is, you look at these stats, but my mom, she was a badass. For three years, she battled pancreatic cancer. My mom would go to work, or to get chemo on Wednesday, she would wear a fanny pack with her chemo bag in her port and she'd go to work. And her reasoning was, our veterans are worth it. So three years. Now, I'm not happy standing up here that I have lost my mother and I'm, I'm ruining a couple slides from now that she's not here anymore. But the reality of it is for three years, she saw my brother turn 40. She was the best Nana. So that's my now 10-year-old niece, Kendall. Kendall calls my mom Nana, and Nana called Nana because abuela or grandmother was too old for my mother. So she called it before Kim was even pregnant. She made three more Christmases. She made three more birthdays. She made three more Mother's Days. That's the last, that's the last Mother's Day I spent with my mom. 
And I remember that Mother's Day specifically because she told me that day she was okay of dying. So I've already spoiled this piece of it, but the reality of this conversation, this conversation about transparency is that knowing what I know now, there are centers of excellence around pancreatic cancer. There are different alternative treatments that I had no clue even existed, and you're listening to a healthcare provider in a market because you're there. Blue Cross doesn't tell you, Cigna doesn't tell you. The reality of it is the normal environment of how the rest of the world gets their healthcare and their health insurance, they don't tell you these things. But the reality of it is when we talk about why it's important, it's because we're talking about people's lives. And the coolest thing, and I've interviewed a couple people since I've been here, the coolest thing about being here is that everybody in this room does it for a why. So the rest of this presentation, I'm gonna spend supporting the why. And my goal is that everybody leaves here a little bit more fired up about getting our asses kicked, I already ruined it, uh, getting our asses kicked trying to do it a different way because the why is the reason. So if we haven't met before, you now know my entire life story. Um, I'm an insurance nerd, that's all that matters. But in 2015, after my mom says, leave no regrets on the table, I decided to leave a job I was making $650,000 with and start a company that I didn't know what I was gonna do. And for the last five years, I've been insanely obsessed with transparency. And so we're gonna talk about why, why we need to have this conversation. So what do your clients or employers, they call premium. What does the health insurance company call premium? Revenue. revenue. Show of hands, who wakes up in the morning wanting to lower their revenue? <laughs> so the reality of it is that we allow at all, any employers to remain fully insured. I don't care what size. And we could argue that you are in the state of California and you can't be self-funded bull knocker, right? The reality of it is there are products and services out there that the reality of it is, let's put the incentives on the right side of the table. So, wait, I was supposed to do this with a little bit more drama, so let's go back. Um, brokers, raise your hand if you are an advisor. What are the two biggest things that the health insurance companies brag about when they sit in front of you? This needs audience participation for this to work out. Discounts and my size, right? Every Dr. Jones is in the network and oh my gosh, we get the best discounts. Now, the reality of it is, I told you I went to Florida State, so I don't consider myself an overly intelligent person. We have a great football team, and it was amazing to be there, and I partied my ass off. But the reality of it is, math is not my strong suit. But it took me a long time to realize a couple of things about discounts and, and a couple of things about, um, about the size. So a question. What do they call the last place person that graduates from med school? Doctor. Doctor. So when people talk about the size and that every Dr. Jones is in the network, hey Paul, I've said a couple curse words, I'm sorry. Okay, um, the, when people talk about the size and that uh, every Dr. Jones is in the network, I have to cringe. And I'm gonna show you some exact examples of some things. So anybody ever heard of a company called Garner? Garner, a great phenomenal company that has amazing data, but this is what they say. If you get people to the highest quality healthcare, uh, show of hands, who wants to go to the second place doc? Who wants your mom? Who wants Nana to go to the second place doc? How do your plans today help people get to the right spot? So this conversation is yes, the reality of what I'm talking about is the harder road to journey, but if what we're talking about is getting people to the highest quality healthcare and it saves people money, how can it be wrong? This is a really interesting study. So this is an eye story. What I want you to take from this is on the left are hospitals in, in a city. On the right 
or docs who performed a surgery at those various hospitals. So each color represents a different hospital. And this conversation is around surgical site infections after colon surgery. So very much like golf, lower scores are better. You, in case you didn't realize, you do not want an infection site there, okay? What this will tell you is that there are really good docs and really crappy docs that practice at each hospital. The funny thing is really crappy docs actually make the hospital more money. Because if you screw up, if you have a surgical site infection after colon surgery, guess where you go back into? The same place that just did it. Yes, I just got food poisoning. I'm gonna go back and eat at the same restaurant, but that's how we do healthcare. Network discounts. So uh, everybody pick up a pen and write something down. Adam ruins everything, why hospitals are so expensive. If you've never seen this, Adam Ruins Everything is a mockumentary, it's on True TV, and they have one on why hospitals are so expensive. But it talks about something called the charge master. Okay? So when we talk about the word discount, I want everybody to make sure you understand discount off of what? Because for 15 years, I think, of my career, I don't know that I really realize this. I made a ton of money doing actuarial assessments on network discounts, and ooh, if we moved this from United to Blue Cross, they get a 4% better discount. 82% of your claims are going into Sarasota Memorial. That means I could save you $280,000 on a network discount, which means nothing. It is an arbitrary number that the hospital makes up that has nothing to the relative value of what the cost of or the value of that service is. So what the slide is showing is the percentage over Medicare that the state averages that the insurance companies bill, or the hospitals bill to the insurance companies. So I'm a Floridian, 900%. You know why it's so high? We're in God's waiting room, right? So the reality of it is there's more Medicare patients there, but 900%. So if Blue Cross is getting this humongous 50% discount, 50% discount off something that's 900% overinflated, you're still paying over 400% of Medicare. And if you understand why we use the relative value of Medicare, it's because that's kind of like the cost. right? Hospitals have to submit to CMS twice a year their financials. And basically CMS says, hey, by the way, this is what we're gonna pay you, and you're kinda not gonna lose money on that. So let's just, for the sake of argument, and anybody who wants to argue, we can argue later, because I really do know how it's, and I can get in the weeds of it, but I'm not gonna do this, because there's not that many people in here. And the reality of it is, so 900% of Medicare, if I make break even at the dollar, Medicare, and I bill $9, but I get a 50% discount and I'm still paying $450, that's a 450% net profit. Business owners in here, would you like to have a 450% net profit? Outside of technology companies, maybe there's not a lot of people that make that kind of margin. These are things that we actually see through. So a 50% discount off a $1,000 tube of toothpaste is still a ridiculously expensive toothpaste. So, my friends at Six Degrees produce some really awesome reports. And what I love about this report, again, an eyesore, but we're sitting here in San Diego. And what I want you to take from this slide is three things. One, look at the price disparity in one market. So those graphs and the different price tags, that's all different hospitals right here in this city that we're sitting in right now. Two, look at the difference between the blue and the green. The blue is Medicare, the green is what that hospital bills. 858%. So let's apply that humongous discount and we're still here in San Diego paying 450%, 400% of Medicare. The last thing that absolutely chaps my ass is that orange line. That orange line is quality. And you'll see there is no correlation. Unlike everything else that we buy, there is no correlation between cost and quality. Typically, you buy a nicer house, you pay more money. You buy a nicer car, you pay more money. Healthcare, more often than not, the 
better the healthcare is amongst the cheaper that it is, how does a health plan without transparency actually address this? Now, this is across the country on one uh, and, uh, DRG code, knees. So I tore my ACL, my MCL, my PCL, and my left knee when I was 30 years old. I was, dr I was drunk. Um, and the reality of it is, this is knees. So again, look at the price disparity. 585% of Medicare. Medicare reimburses 11,600. The cost, self-reported cost, almost 17,000, but they're gonna bill almost 70,000. Tell me what your best carrier is getting as a discount. 55. 55. Shit, let's throw 60 on it. When you could go down the street, how much are you getting a knee surgery at one of your best surgeons? Doug? 12 grand. 12 grand. Let's just round up and say that's a really good and say it's 20. I'm gonna go 50 because I'm bad at math. A 50% discount of $68,000 is still 34 versus 20. Let's say they have a $5,000 out of pocket expense. 20 plus five, now the patient gets it for free. The plan pays 25 versus the 35 that we're talking about, everybody wins. So, I'm gonna talk about the way we used to do things, and I'm gonna to hope to get some chuckles, but the reality of it is it should be an evil chuckle because this is really what happens. Okay, hey client, your renewal, 18 points. Man, got a bunch of claims. We shopped it, don't worry, we did our job. Every carrier, the three that's in our market, we did it. We put, we put three CCs in every line. <sighs> if we only increase the deductible by $1,000 and maybe some co-pays and take the out of pocket of what's coming out of their paycheck and up a little bit, it's only going to be a 3%, 11%, whatever the number is. Only 5% of your people will be impacted. I was just in Dallas for an event, Nelson Griswold's event, and uh, an amazing, not Dallas, Indianapolis, sorry, Indianapolis for an event, and never pay the first bill. Have you seen the book? First of all, get it, it's amazing. But there was a stat on there, there was a couple, 140, I believe, 140, 180 million dollars of healthcare debt. The average amount of somebody in debt was $468. So the average deductible right now in plans across the country is what? $3,300. $3,300 and the average person who is in debt is in debt for less than $500. Does anybody else see the math wrong on this? And the reality of it is, if we only worry about, oh, it's only 5%, the rest of that 5%, that 5% are people that become a statistic. They become the 67%. So, Mr. Broker, you are lucky. We are so close with Blue Cross. We have the best relationship. We are a Platinum United Healthcare broker. We got it down to 11%. We saved you 7%. Now, I hate this terminology. What's the definition of save? You pay less. What we really should say is, hey client, we brought you back a less shitty renewal and it's still more than, it's 7% more. The reality of this is, it is horse. But that's what our business is and we laugh and I hope you chuckle because it is kind of funny, but the reality of it is, that's what I did my entire career. I put lipstick on a pig. Now, the financial realities of this, Year over year, deductibles go up, deductibles go up. That means that when people go and access healthcare, they have a higher out of pocket. We just talked about $3,200, $3,300 is an average deductible. An average person doesn't have four or $500 in the bank. Those two numbers don't add up. So when you walk into the hospital, you now become an accounts receivable. 
You cannot pay that $3,000 deductible. You don't have $400 in the bank. Typically, a hospital spends between 30 and 50 cents on the dollar trying to collect the dollar. So that turns that hospital in to a collection agency, right? Huge default rates, 90 to 120 days to collect. The reality of it is the member's functionally uninsured. And there's 67% of people that file bankruptcy. So the employer, your client, the people we should be getting up every day is the member and the employer are sitting here worried about something that they can't actually use. And if they use, they're probably going to go into bankruptcy. And the reality of it is it's all because we have one big opaque black box. What does the good broker do? No longer can this be the blind leading the blind. How many business owners are in here? Do you use data to make decisions in your business? There's nothing that frustrates me more than an organization you sit down and talk to them about their renewal and about data. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I've been hearing it all day. How, how do you know that's fair? Well, I, I, I don't. So you're completely cool. So, I'm here to talk about a couple of strategies that actually work, but it takes a little bit of effort. So if you are a lazy person, get out. For real. So there's one thing that bugs me. So in this small group arena, in order to give somebody a chance, do we all agree that you cannot be fully insured? Does anybody think that being fully insured is actually going to save anybody money? Because if you do, go to Vegas and think you're actually going to make money. So the reality of this is the only way this works out is if this client, the smaller group client, or any client for that matter, is self-insured. Everybody good? Okay. So the reality of going self-insured when you're in that small group market, you get no data. So we talk about IHQs, right? What's the first excuse you're going to give? And I'm going to say you because you've all said it, and if, you have, if you're lying, if you said you didn't. What's the first excuse you're going to say about IHQs? It's an administrative nightmare. It is hard. You know what's hard? The extra $1,000 deductible when the person couldn't afford the $1,000 deductible before that. So the reality of getting the data is like fishing with the fish finder. So I want to change your mentality and your thought around this that we now all become risk managers of health plans. Right? Think about what your PNC brethren do on a day-to-day -day basis. They try to mitigate risk. If you have the data, you have the fish finder. I know who's on high medications. I know who's on dialysis. I know who needs to get a prescription drug filled somewhere else. I know all of the things that I need to do. And on a small group, one, two, three people are driving 50, 60% of the cost and you're able to know that information if you had that data before you even get into the effective date. So I'm going to show you, and I just happen to have a, a, a partner here in the front row, Rover, if you've never talked to them, this isn't a Rover commercial, so uh, the, re the, the reality, sit down, sit, <laughs> sit, sit, sit down, sit down, sit down. So the reality of it is, I want you to think about EOB information. Everybody's had an EOB, right? You've gone to the hospital, you get this thing, it says a bunch of stuff you've never read before, but the reality of what it does say is the stuff they did to you, where you went to get that stuff, how much you paid, how much the plan made. Think about self-funded data. It says the same stuff. So the reality of this is, whether you go IHQ or whether you have a technology platform that actually scrapes the EOB data, at the end of the day, you have data. I'm going to teach you now what you do with that data. And these are real life examples. This isn't me mocking up a spreadsheet because I'm not that good. But the, the, what you do with the data, there's a couple of levers that I want you to think about with doing the data and carrying the data flag. One. I don't know. Call the people out and make sure that a renewal is fair. Anybody need me to go back to that stock price slide and let you know that the health insurance companies make a lot of money? 
So again, what we call pr uh, premium, they call revenue, at least let's spot check. So the very worst uh, uh, conversation that you can have with a client about and after you get their data is, it's a fair renewal. That's the worst thing that happens. I'm okay paying something that seems fair. I don't like it, but at least I feel okay about it. The best things you could do, you know how to win business? You know how to grow? Tell people something they don't know. Educate them. So now this conversation is, hey, by the way, we pulled your data. Let me talk to you about a bunch of crap now that you can actually do. Whether we're talking about prescriptions, whether we're talking about specialty management, whether we're talking about medical management, whether we're talking about any solution with the reality of saving money but impacting lives, the ability to do things is huge. That last one for me is imagine if, and I'm gonna show you a case study that we did with Rover with a broker buddy of mine in Kentucky, in BFE, Kentucky. I went to this place, I walked in, I swear to God I was the only Puerto Rican that had ever walked in this place. <laughs> the reality of it is it was a bank there locally and he had a personal relationship with the bank. They were with Humana fully insured. We scraped the EOB data and boom, we got a really competitive self-funded quote that funded to the max was still less than their fully insured renewal. If anybody understands self-funding, that means you win. Guaranteed victory. Now, the coolest thing that we found is that there was somebody who looked like they were gonna have a pretty expensive procedure. During open enrollment meetings, what's a term when you guys are moving somebody from carry to carry that you use in every single uh, um, open enrollment meeting? This body and participation, I, I would have given out shots if you guys are, are this nervous here. Pre-existing, not so much, not the word I was thinking. Transition to care, right? Hey, if you're gonna have a service, I don't wanna be pissed off that Dr. Jones is now not in the new network, so transition to care is a conversation that we talk. Now, during the transition to care conversation, the person that we saw the data raises their hand and says, I'm having a heart procedure on October 2nd, the second day of the effective date. This person had a now already done the pre-off process through Humana. It was scheduled for $188,000 of allowed build charges. This person was going to the community hospital of BFE, Kentucky. I don't even know where we were. It was so in the woods. Now, we had two options within 24 hours. One, anybody ever heard of Oklahoma Heart Institute? Hence the name, they only do hearts. If somebody only does, does one thing, they become pretty damn good at it. The other place, anybody heard of John Hopkins? Now, think of your Nana, think of your wife, think of your daughter, son, insert person that means something to you. Would you be okay with them going to a better place to have their service? Is that a fair assumption that we are all comfortable with that? So this reality is that th this patient, their wife and their dog Fufu flew from Kentucky to John Hopkins and had a surgery that saved the plan $50,000. Now, any stop loss markets in here? This would have been a spec claim, was not a spec claim. Best part, cherry on top, patient paid nothing. But the reality of it is you couldn't renew with Humana and do this. You had to do something different to get the data to even understand that this was possible. This is another one. So scraping data. So how do we know what's going on? Well, this is a good indicator. This is from your EOB data. Would your EOB data show where you went and accessed healthcare? Amazingly, when somebody goes to Florida cancer specialists, but if this person is not above the 50% notice or isn't over 25,000, you don't know that this person exists, right? You only get reports that are over a threshold. This person likely is what? Going to be a cancer claim. But it took scraping the data and getting the data. Now, what about this person? Well, holy coley. 
They're having services that could be done. This person is having a lot of stuff in the hospital. You will pay four to five times more for an image at a hospital than you would at the independent down the street imaging center for the same damn machine and the same tech that's reading it. But it takes understanding the data. Now, this is the one that really chaps me. Here you go, here's my Revlimed. Client spending $15,000 a month on one drug, patient in six months spent $1,200. $1,200 on one drug. For an average person, they're making a decision whether or not they put food on the table or they buy their drug. This is a drug that's literally saving and keeping them alive. So this is no exaggeration. Revlimed is a drug that you take for the rest of your living life because it keeps you alive. And this person is having to make that decision. Now, Revlimed has a specialty uh, patient assistance program that the reality of it is the qualification we just talked about. 155,000 for a household of four. What percentage of working Americans make less than $155,000 for a household of four? 92% according to the last statistic. 92%. And that's just Revlimed. Look at this. So this is a company, and I'm not endorsing any company, I'm just showing you that these strategies are out there if you're partnering with the right people and doing the right things, but the reality of it is, this ain't the easy way. The easy way is renewing with Humana, renewing with Blue Cross and Blue Shield and not asking these questions, but if you look at this, there are $248,000 worth of claims, and every single one of them you could procure internationally through a MAP program or through a domestic tourism program. 100%. These are the 3% of the people that are driving 50% of the cost. But if we're never asking the questions or demanding the data, we wouldn't even know that this is the case. This is another group, 1.7 million in spend and anywhere between 800,000 and a million five of potential programs out there. And I'm not Pollyanna, right? I'm not blowing smoke that says everyone's gonna qualify and everyone's gonna participate. But in this scenario, if half the people let me give you the scenario. Hey, would you like your drug for free? Let's just fill out an application and you can make, talk to somebody and they're gonna get you your drug for free. Cool? I just spent $200 a month and I can spend four minutes on the phone with somebody? And oh, P.S., they're gonna ship it to my house? And I'm gonna save and the client is gonna save a half a million dollars. This is what transparency does. But without the contract, to be able to manipulate and do the contract language and have the right partners in the audience that are helping us do this, the reality of it is this doesn't happen. Spread revenue, where's my boy Mill? Miller, that looks familiar, right? So Bill Miller and I, I've won, I've won 15 pieces of business easily doing this. So this is a claims dump. The client should get their claims information. If they're not, brokers, pick up your pen. As a condition to win this bid, you must give me this data on this frequency as part of the win. If that's not in every single one of your RFPs, you're leaving an opportunity. Why, what happens? Well, when they're on the seventh month of the plan year, you wanna actually do the analysis for it. What does Blue Cross say? We don't provide that data. Or it's gonna cost you $1,500 for it. That's crap, it's the client's data. If you get it during the RFP process when they're begging for the business, you now get it in the contract that says, hey, you owe me this data and you signed on the dotted line that says that. Talk to a client, a prospective client on this conversation because they've never heard this. So now you get the data. This is what I love. This is what I'm gonna call death by a thousand cuts. Who's on a statin in here? Two, three, bunch of the older guys. Um, so a, uh, a statin, most men are gonna be on at some point in their lives. You'll see here that there are almost 10,000 
claims of a statin on this. Look at the cost. Through a normal Optum CVS Express Scripts contract, which by the way is 82% of the world's, they're paying through the plan between $35 and $75 for a statin that they bought for less than $4. This is the same person going to get the same drug at the same CVS on the same day. This is not a what if hypothetical, maybe we could talk to their pharmacist and they could uh, prescribe something else. This is literally buying it through transparency. And you pay a transparent PBM, I don't know, maybe a service fee to do their damn job. This is what is happening, and I'll tell you guys, I worked at Willis for 15 years. This is not the conversation that a lot of the bigger players are happening. Some are, but this is not a conversation that most people are having. Why? So let's talk about improving care. Can I get a time check? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Ooh, I'm late. Uh, I'm almost done. So I told you about the shitty statistics. I'm gonna walk you through a real life scenario. So I'm working on a group with Nurse Deb in Michigan. This is who the person's going to. This person is a pancreatic cancer patient. This is their quality score of their surgeon. Guys, the outcome of this might be the same, right? This person's gonna die. I hate saying it that way, but I mean, the, the stats are that, that this person's gonna die. But if we're talking about one more week, two more weeks, five more weeks, or hell, just the notion of the mental capacity that you're at the very best person. This is who Nurse Deb told the person to go to. This is real life stuff. This is data that if you design the program the right way, but it starts with transparency and data. There is no way we have this information if they're with Blue Cross. We don't get this information. Do you think that Blue Cross has this information? You darn right they do. So, we have to stop designing plans and letting our industry hit the easy button. How many times have you heard something, our people aren't that smart, they don't understand benefits, we need to make it easier. No, we don't. We know what happens when we've made it easier. The reality of it is, most things can be solved with one conversation with somebody who actually has the information that can do this. So, this is what we're gonna talk about. What can transparency do? One, the quality, we just saw it. These are real numbers on real groups that are less than 15 months old. The oldest one was a year ago. Two, lower the employer costs. Three, eliminate employee costs. All of these strategies, all of these conversations that we talked about, the result of it for the patient is free healthcare. Go to the right spot, talk to the advocate, talk to the nurse, and the reality of it is everything is free. With an average deductible at 3,200, let's say it's 2X for the out-of-pocket max, now we're talking about average people spending, saving five or $6,000. When the average person is making thirty-five dollars to $40,000 before Uncle Sam, we're talking 15, 20% of someone's net take-home pay that you could return back to there if we just did something different. Compliance, not the, not the weird compliance that attorneys, but the compliance of somebody doing the stuff that they're supposed to be doing. And for me, if you don't have to pay a deductible or out of pocket, you don't file bankruptcy. So, my call to action for everybody out here is you're here for a reason. You didn't spend a bunch of money coming out to San Diego to go home and do things the way you did. Or you wasted your money. This is kind of cool. We were all out of COVID. I think people want to see each other. I met a bunch of people I've never met before live. Cool. But the reality of it is I hope that if there's anything that you left, the impacting lives part of it is the cool part. The making money just comes because we're impacting lives and we're focusing the right way. So the reality of it is, if you, yourself, and this is my things, if you don't believe that this is the right answer first, forget about it. No offense, just don't come to these events. 
The reality of it is the camaraderie, the things that you want to do here, the things that you want to pick up from this is because you truly believe there is a better way. And I am somebody who walked away from a lot of freaking money in a very prestigious job at age 31 to do this the right way. And the reality of this is it's absolutely there. You are not alone. I see a bunch of vendor partners all day long that make me look good every single day and love to do it. Am I right? Am I right? So you are not alone. If you are a broker out there and you're saying, I don't have any self-funded business, I have, but I got a Rolodex, you are a perfect person. We want to talk to you. <laughs> this is not a sales pitch, but the reality of it is that that's good. This is way more than financial and the alternative, Nelson Griswold, I stole this from your LinkedIn po uh, post the other day. The alternative is the government running our healthcare. And I'm not a politic. I, don't, I live in Puerto Rico, I can't even vote for president, so it doesn't matter anyway. But the reality of it is, I don't want to go access health care at the DMV. Right? That's what I know, and if we don't change it, we're not going back the old way. Right? This ain't getting more PPO and more normal. It's either that we fix it, or the government's going to pretend that they can fix it. There's no option about that. So. I laid out some things from a process standpoint. One, from a sales and marketing standpoint, if you do not have a process that you walk people through, you're leaving an opportunity on the table. So, title your process. I call mine the pathway to transparency, right? Not everybody is going to be your prospect. So understand who it is that you wanna work with. Education is key. So I love this game and this conversation because right now I'm pretty much selling, right? But I'm not selling, I'm educating. The reality of it is, yes, I know I'm over time. Um, the reality of it is, this is my favorite conversation. If you are a broker and you want to win more business, ask the right questions and force your clients and prospects to ask questions. I call them banana peel questions, right? Our industry can't help themselves answering the the bullshit questions, right? Hey, can I get the data? Why is my renewal increased? Da, 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 da. These are things that are gonna generate answers. So, I've created a process. Take out your phones right now. Text me on this number. I will send you this thing. It's got the five banana wheel questions that I ask every single prospect. It's got the process, and these three videos or two videos are video examples of things off of an RX analysis that I send to prospects so you can see the reality of this sale. So 813-537-6992. I'm not going to sell you anything. I just did this, and I thought it was really cool, and I figured this is the easy way to give it to you. 813-537-6992. All right. My last slide. So the reality of this is everybody has a story. I've interviewed about 15 people on camera earlier today and that was my one question is, hey, you're here for a reason. You wake up doing it harder the hard way, right? We wake up doing it the hard way, why? So understand your why. If there's anything that, that has changed my career and I'm telling you, I'm making less money than I was as an entrepreneur. I'm making less money than I was when I was at Wills, 100%. But I am so much happier, and I own something that I can be super proud of. So understand your why. Two, encourage questions. If we don't demand more and demand for our clients and prospects to demand more of their vendor partners, if you're a service provider partner, which I see a lot in the audience, ask the, give your brokers these questions that they need to be asking. Don't say why you're better than CVS or you're better than Optum or you're better than whatever. It'll naturally happen if the client will just go ask the questions. But if they understand what the outcome could be, paint that journey, right? And you are Yoda, they're coming along for your ride. But if you let them know through that question, the market cannot help itself. The market will slip on that banana peel all day long. Be flexible. This is not gonna be a road from point A to point B. 
If you're someone who's never done healthcare in this transparent model way, it's not the easiest thing. There's going to be some bumps in the road. Clients are going to get pissed off. Members are going to be pissed off because you're asking them to do something different. And they've been accessing healthcare the same way they have since day one. Trusting what Dr. Jones says, just going and accessing healthcare, utilizing the black card that the employer gives them, which is called that medical ID card. But I showed you my specific story. My specific story on if we had transparency back then, I'm confident my life would have ended up different. Now, I'm not crying about how my life's ended up, but the reality of it is we all get up, all of you get up every day. And if we just focus our attention that that member, that member doesn't have a $3,000 deductible. That member needs the tools, needs the encouragement, needs the advocacy, but needs the transparency. And so my urge, my conversation, my everything today, if you took everything out of anything, it is, the reality of it is, is switching that focus to the member and allowing the member to win changes our industry. And so that is just my, my last thing. If we haven't connected, um, that is a not my head on uh, James Bond's body. Um, but uh, that's my personal contact, that is my phone, that is in my pocket right now. Uh, if you've not heard, and this is a little self, same, uh, a selfish plug, if you've not heard my podcast, Impact Healthcare, if you are in the business and you wanna be on my podcast, I wanna spread love on this and I wanna change this, guys. So I thank everybody for paying attention. I am, I didn't say the joke of your la I'm the last thing before your drink, but I am the last thing before your drink. I'm honored that you guys let me up here and thanks so much.